What do you think about adding a little bit of a drum roll to this here episode 341? <laughs> Roger that. Thank you, Mr. Quince. This here episode is all about going to Saturdays 2.0. You'll be getting tips on the talks, tastings, and the cider dinner, including what to bring, what to wear, where to park, and more. So stay tuned and come along for the ride, because this is an epic event taking place November 4th through the 6th in my special spot of Ciderville, Western Massachusetts. Hey, 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 my name is Rhea Wincaller, and I am the producer and cider MC of this weekly podcast, where we speak with makers, cider enthusiasts, and folks within the cider trade from around the world. I am back in my home port of Ciderville, and I'm here with Mr. Quince, who you heard bringing in that drum roll, and Perry Pear. Hello, yes, it's me, Perry Pear. And the Medlars. Hello. We're all in the Cider House this week because we're super revved up about the event that's taking place in just a short time zone. I mean, we're looking at what? Right now, this is going to be rolling out on the 18th of October and events start happening on October 28th. That's Cider Week for Western Massachusetts. And then Cider Days 2.0 will be rolling out on November 4th through the 6th. And it couldn't have been done without a whole bunch of support from so many sponsors, good people, and you out there in Ciderville. So I'm going to be talking about all that, bringing you up to snuff, as they say, whatever the heck that means. I believe it means bringing people up to an adequate level of understanding. Well, thank you very much, Perry Pear. Uh, You are just a dictionary... uh, in, in a pair's body. Indeed, Rhea. <laughs> Moving right along. Yes, we're going to move right along right now. Uh, so we have a lot to tell you. Uh, all kinds of tips about the event, the schedule, which is being constantly updated, and so much more. But first, I think we're going to take a little bit of a pause here, and then we'll be right back with some news by our sponsor, Fermentis, which is also getting involved in Cider Days 2.0. You heard that little ditty. And before I get to Fermentus, I just want to say that it is good to be back home. Uh, For those regular listeners out there, and for those of you who are listening to Cider Chat for the first time, I should say welcome. But for the regular listeners, you know that I have been on a whirlwind trip, a transatlantic trip, really. I was in France on the French Cider Tour, then went to California, and, you know... That was quite a trip there because it was a passing of my mom. And then I was at a conference and, uh, you know, all the healing that happens when you're saying goodbye to someone that is just so tied into who you are as a person. And that little ditty that I just played was right after I came back from sailing with my brother and my cousin. And so you're hearing my, my cousin Jay, who... He and I do a lot of singing for this here podcast, all the main songs, and his friend, Mike Surprise, who has a really cool name, (laughs) Mike Surprise, right? Anyways, we were back in port after being in super rough seas out in Monterey Bay, which is something I've done before with my brother, but this particular day, we were the only boat out there, and he is a very good captain, so we both felt really safe, my cousin and I. (laughs) I'm more of a water person than he is, but he was game. And while we're out there, we were kind of like following these breaching humpback whales. I mean, they were just nonstop, the most magnificent whale scene I have seen in a long time. There's a beluga trip that I had up in Canada, up in Quebec that I'll have to share with you someday. But this was magnificent. In fact, I saw one whale go straight up and then fly like a pickle across the ocean and then land. I mean, it didn't go like a long way. It wasn't like a flying pig, but it was a whale that was fully 
out of the water. It must have been a juvenile or something. I don't know how a huge humpback whale could do that. That was like, ooh, just releasing energy, you know, from being with mom and all that scene. Wow, wow, wow. And that that is a bit where I have been. It is just woo, over the top. And then we came back into port, into the harbor, pulled out the guitars and started playing some music. And that's Jay and Mike doing that little ditty. So healing. And on the same trip, I was carrying that bottle of Calvados that I spoke about a couple episodes ago, bringing that to Calico Cidery and also bringing that to the farmer's market in Santa Cruz to meet up with Nicole Todd of Santa Cruz Cider Company. And Nicole, if you are listening right now, I want to say that cider that you gave called Purple Rain, it's a collab between like uh, wineskins and cider. Beautiful color. It's like a purplish color to it. And the one of the most delicious wine and cider collabs I have had in a long time. So thank you for that. Uh, you know, I was just kind of traveling around the country with a bottle of Calvados. <laughs> it was great, which makes me really stoked for Cider Days 2.0, because not only are we going to be drinking French Calvados, we're also going to be having American apple brandy, which is equally worth carrying around the country with you and toasting to those you love. But before I get to all that, see, I digress because there's so much going on. We're going to go back Take just a mini pause here and then come back with some news about Fermentus and how they are participating in Cider Days 2.0. Back on episode 336, I spoke with Anne Fleisch, who is a technical wizard at Fermentus. She probably doesn't go by that title, but I'm going to call her that because she was able to answer a lot of yeast questions and bring us through the four SAF cider yeast options that they have at Fermentus. Fermentus is a cultivator of yeast. So if you're looking for something to put into your cider this time of year, it's all about that for those of us in the Northern Hemisphere. We need some good yeast, some culture yeast, if we want to direct the cider a bit. Even if we're doing a wild ferment, maybe initially, and then post the wild ferment, we want to add in a little culture yeast to kind of rein it in or do something else. I think Fermentus is really your hookup here. In fact, for Cider Days 2.0, there's going to be a little delivery of yeast packets, and those are going to be handed out to the folks at some of these ticketed events taking place on November 5th. So if you're a cider maker and you have your tickets now to say, I don't know, the cider dinner, there's a good chance you're going to be getting a yeast packet from Fermentus. And they have four different ones. So whether it's dry, sweet, or fruity, or balanced, maybe you want all four components, they have the yeast for you. You just go to fermentus.com and look for Saf Cider. That's spelled S-A-F Cider. And they'll have the whole script there, tell you what it's about. And this is available for both amateur cider makers like myself and commercial cider makers. Maybe one little packet isn't going to do it for you if you're a commercial cider attending. But what's not to love about a little free yeast that you could play with? Maybe that little five-gallon carboy will come out of the, the dusty downstairs, or maybe you already have it washed and ready. This is going to be a fun yeast to be able to use. It's one thing off your checklist. And you know there's going to be a lot of juice available in the area over Saturday's 2.0 weekend. So Thank you so much. Once again, for Fermentus, if you want to hear more about them, what they're doing, and their yeast, go to episode 336. There will be a link in the show notes to that, or just look up Fermentus at Cider Chat. Google it. Before we get into all the details about the events and tips and whatnot, you might be wondering, well, what is Cider Days 2.0? And to get the full history I first want to recommend just go to the about page, which details more than I'm going to be telling you right now for just timing and the fact that I want to get more into the events. But in short, back in 1994, a small group of friends, they were commercial cider makers such as West County Cider, an author by the name of Paul Carenti, a fermenter by the name of Charlie Ochowski, and a whole bunch of volunteers, myself included, all helped 
to put on a one-day event that was called Cider Days. I asked Judith Maloney just a little while ago why it was always like one word and not two words. And one word with two capitals, Cider and Days, are both capitalized and put together. There's no hyphen. There's no space. It's just one word. And she basically said, you know, I wasn't that good with a computer. So <laughs> that's that's how the branding stuck. And I have to say, I like it. It really sets it apart. So it went for many years of Cider Days. Then it kind of got changed to Franklin County Cider Days. Franklin County Cider Days, I believe, is still happening, but I'm not part of that. I, I it The committee dissolved, and I think the Chamber of Commerce is doing something, but there's no real events that I see happening with that. And because of COVID and getting pushed back, I just couldn't let this beloved event that I've been part of since the beginning fade away. I knew that it was a big revenue source for so many in this region. And not only that, it was like the think tank, the Mecca, where people come, both amateur and commercial, to find the newest trends in cider, to make contact with each other, with good friends, and of course, to always raise a glass. So actually, this year, early this year, when I saw it was all kind of falling apart, I decided to use my platform here on Cider Chat and all the different social media channels to promote Cider Days 2.0. And of course, I did it with a whole lot of help from some friends. So allow me to first begin there, because really that's what it comes down to. If you're going to put on an event like this, you need some sponsors. So first off, a little bit of a tip of the glass to Ryan and Casey Liquors, which is in downtown Greenfield. They're going to be open all weekend. They're going to have an in-store tasting on Saturday from 12 to 3. But you don't have to wait for that in-store tasting to make your way to that store. Because I will tell you, during that in-store tasting, it gets really, really packed. And the ciders and all the brandies and Calvados are already waiting for you. In fact, there's some very special bottles of brandy waiting for you. And if you bring one of the Lairs and Company bottles of brandy to the Calvados tasting, there's a good chance you're going to be able to see Lisa Lairs and she will sign that for you. She's going to be doing in-house signing at Ryan and Casey's. I've been working with Christy, and now her son Isaac is coming on board. We have the in-town store at Ryan and Casey's on Main Street in Greenfield. And then out in Charlemont, which is out on Route 2, they have the Cold River Package Store. And there will also be an in-store tasting that same day on November 5th from 12 to 3. They have an excellent selection of ciders. Probably many of you coming to that weekend, you might not be able to find these ciders anywhere else. And this is a nice way to support them and support them in supporting Cider Days 2.0. In fact, I stopped in there this week to get a little uh, audio soundbite from them. So let's roll to that next and hear both from Christy and Isaac as we're talking about what you can expect at that in-store tasting. This store has been in Greenfield since, like, how long, Christy? 1908. 1908. That's, that's the earliest liquor license we can find for Ryan and Casey Liquors. That's amazing. Yeah. you got to go to their website, which will show you an old photo from the store. But we're also here with Isaac. Isaac, can you tell us a little bit about the in-store tasting that's going to be happening? What what can people expect? Traditionally, it's always been in Ryan and Casey's. Uh, the past couple years due to COVID, we had it up at Cold River Package, our second store up in Charlemont. This year, because we have so many vendors and cideries and people wanting to come serve their uh, product here. We're doing it at both stores. So that's very exciting. I really loved the outdoor atmosphere under the roof on the porch at, at Cold River Package and Market in Charlemont. Yeah, and that's right on Route 2 up in Charlemont, so you can't miss it. It's a good destination. There's a lot of things to get in the store, and including cider. We're also going to have Lisa Lairs Don from Lairs & Company. And so she's going to be here signing bottles. Is that right, Christy? Yes, sixth generation, no, ninth generation Laird. It's really made a big impact in the country. They are the America's oldest distiller in the U.S. of A., dating back to 1698, and their first license was 1780. George Washington wrote about them in his diary. Grandma okay. always wanted to put it in her apple pie. Like, that was the one thing, and you knew it was fall, is because somebody would be coming in 
asking for a bottle of Laird's for Grandma's apple pie. But now to know there's like high end, high tier, the last few years we've started getting in more of the, the line. So now to meet somebody from there, give us first hand information. So uh, besides Laird's, we got Downey Cider, J Seeds Whiskey, East Hampton Cider Project, West County Cider. Who else we got? The Vermont Vermouth. Ooh. Kobe's coming from Vermont Vermouth. Nice. An apple vermouth. Artifact Cider, Angry Orchard, Far From the Tree. Wow, there's quite a list there. And Oliver, we even got a, have a couple wines, Oliver Apple Pie wine, and they also have three different ciders. One of them is a bourbon barrel cider. So those are all new to us this yum, year yum. to try out. I love those bourbon barrel ciders. Great. Yeah. Well, We'll be selling everything that you're going to be tasting so you can buy it all to take home with you and plus hundreds of other ciders and beers and whiskeys and liqueurs and everything else. Ice ciders too, right? Yes. Yep, Eden Eden has the ice cider lineup. Yeah. That honey crisp that everybody wants. They come into the store, they get to try things, and then they get to like grab and go and get the product right here. Yes. Right? Yeah. It's a setup. It's always really busy, right? Yeah, it's... Oh. Really, really busy. It's clear out the whole front of the store, and it's nothing but cider. And mingling people for, what, three hours, two and, and a half And it's hours? inside at Ryan and Casey's, and it's outside at Cold River on the porch, so. Yeah, plenty yeah. of room. Plenty of room up there. Because that's what Cider Days is all about. So thank you for si- sponsoring Cider Days 2.0. This store has been a mainstay in Greenfield for so many years and always has the select products to deliver to you. And I'm really impressed on what you're doing. Get producers into this area and keep on celebrating all the good libations. So thanks for your support. Thank you. Thank you, Rhea, for organizing it. These folks have been such a big supporter of Cider Days 2.0. It is where I have been able to send a lot of the product coming in for the events. They have a room to be able to store it. They've been super kind. All the signs coming in. Really wonderful people. If they are working so well with me, you know they're going to work well with you. Don't miss that in-store tasting. It's going to be happening on Saturday, November 5th from 12 to 3 at their Greenfield store. And don't forget about the Cold River Package up in Charlemont, right on Route 2. So if you're like coming in from New York State or the Berkshires making your way to the events, that is a good stop. It's going to be all outside. And right now the autumn colors are popping on the trees here. It's absolutely beautiful. And I have no doubt that there's going to be some really nice color left just for you. While you're out shopping and getting all your cider and tucking it away and getting excited about bringing it home. Lots of fun to be had. Let's keep it rolling. Artifact Cider Project has also been a really awesome sponsor of Cider Days 2.0. They have two locations. So let's say that you are flying into Boston or just driving out from the east. You could go to their Cambridge location, which is called The Station. It's right on Massachusetts Avenue in Cambridge. And then as you come out to Western Massachusetts, they have another tap room here in Florence, and it is open. They're going to have extended hours, have a lot of really nice ciders, and then some special ciders. In fact, we're going to have one of their special ciders at the tap takeover on Friday night. That's called the Coleraine Russet, and it's a blend of Roxbury Russet and a Golden Ashmeal Kernel. I talked to Sohan Bhatt, who's one of the co-owners of Artifact Cider Company. He's super stoked about this because it's all made with local apples, and we're going to have it on tap Friday night, November 4th, at the Tap Takeover that's taking place in downtown Greenfield. It's one of the many ciders that are going to be on tap. But in essence, I really just want to say thank you to Artifact Cider Project for supporting Cider Days 2.0. Check out what they have going on. Whatever direction you're coming from, you're going to be able to find some artifact. And you know it's going to also be available at Ryan and Casey Liquors. If you'd like to walk about an orchard, and not just any orchard, but a museum quality orchard, and look for the apple pretzels, this is fun for both adults and kids, then you want to go to New Salem Cider. You just go through the middle of this quintessential New England town called New Salem, 
and you go to the far back, you'll see a little sign that says Lover's Lane. That's like on one part of the property line. And then there'll be a whole bunch of parking out in the field. Just park your car there. Be prepared to go up. They always have a fire cooking. You could get cider and walk about the orchard looking for the apple pretzels. They're also going to be having talks such as how to make cider mustard. And that's going to be with the cider maker, William Groda. On Sunday... You'll be able to hear from April Woodard. She's going to be teaching a beginning and advanced cider making course. That's from 1 to 2.15. And then from 2.15 to 3.15, it's bring your own cider. They're going to be doing tasting and evaluating, having fun and troubleshooting. I mean, this is an event that I first led, and then I handed over the torch to April, who has just taken it to, to to the tip of the tree and is having a ton of fun. It's typically where I end up on Sunday because I just love hanging out and seeing what she's doing and tasting everybody's stuff. You could also get cider donuts there. You could get some amazing cider vinegar there. Again, I said there's an outdoor fire. I think I mentioned that. This is just a spectacular place. Don't miss what's happening at New Salem Cider. And if you're lucky, you get to meet Carol B. Hillman, the woman behind it all who got this place up and running, really curating this whole scene, bringing back this colonial era house. And while you're there, make sure to say hello to that giant peri bear tree out in the field. In fact, I am asking you, if you go, ask those folks, where is the peri pear tree that Cider Chat always talks about? You could see it from the top of the hill. It's really in view of everywhere. It's magnificent. Go down, say hello for me and for you, because, you know, when you want a friend, you could typically find one in a peri pear. Hmm. Thank you very much, Rhea. And on behalf of all the peri pears out there in the world, we welcome your attention. <laughs> I know you do, peri pear. I know you do. That's why I'm sending them your way. Right. <laughs> Moving on. Okay, let's keep on moving on. I love showing off the region where I live. I am a tour guide, right? I lead totally sided tours. And I don't just lead them out to the other parts of the world. I love bringing people to regions in my own home state. And one of the destinations I love going to is North Adams, where you could find Berkshire Cider Project. And you want to go there because there's so much happening in North Adams. I mean, it's the home base for Mass Mocha, which is a world-class museum. Totally amazing, fun, fun, fun museum. And you get to partner that with Berkshire Cider Project on the weekend. Oh my gosh. I mean, tell me about like spontaneous combustion right there. It's so perfectly matched. They're making some really cool ciders. Let me go down this quick list. You could expect basically dry and sparkling ciders. So they have a dry cider. They have a bittersweet, which is a pub style cider with British heirloom apples. They have a rosé co-fermented with grape skins, a champagne method cider. So expect brute and extra sparkle there. They also have the Hancock Shaker Village. Now you might not know about this, but they do an annual cider dinner at the Hancock Shaker Village, which is out towards Pittsfield. So do get on their mailing list for that. And that that particular cider named after the Hancock Shaker Village is all made with hand-picked heirloom apples. Then you also have Windy Hill, which is a barrel-aged cider. Mm -hmm. A pet knot, which was made with, check this out, wild foraged dalgo crab apples that were carbonically macerated prior to blending with fresh Macintosh apples. Oh, oh, oh. and then there's a community. I mean, I'm just like, I need some cider, please, please. Uh, There's a community cider project that's all made with donated apples, and then they have a sour quince, right? And we love the quince. (coughs) Thank you very much. Everybody is getting in on the quince. And of course, Berkshire Cider Project is really hitting a home run with this. This also is a limited release. Make this a destination, especially if you're like coming down from Vermont or over from New York, taking Route 2 that brings you through North Adams. I'll tell you, the drive any time of the year is absolutely stunning. And it's a nice way to make your way to the center hub of Saturday's 2.0 in Greenfield. 
or take the day and just drive out there. Make that the destination for the weekend. You're going to win no matter which way you move. You're going to find some cider for you. Check out Berkshire Cider Project and tip the glass to them both for sponsoring Cider Days 2.0. Scott Farm is only 30 minutes north of Greenfield, Mass., and they have amazing apples there, just an amazing orchard. They supply a lot of cideries with their really dearly sought-after apples, and now they're also making cider. You see, they have this dude that came over from Breton or Brittany, France, and is all about cider. I mean, last year, you might remember that I did this little episode. We had Eleanor Leger of Eden Specialty Cider and Simone Renault of Scott Farm. Well, Simone, he is there now, and he is making keeved freaking cider at Scott Farm. And you could try some. I mean, it's there. Each weekend, they have what is called Pippin's Cafe, and they're having hard cider tastings with a little bit of cheese on the side. While you're there, you could also, (laughs) believe it or not, you could taste the cider, you could buy some cider, both sweet and fermented. You're going to have apples on all on the weekend of Cider Days 2.0. So, check out what they have going on there. And in addition, there's a lot to do there, okay? You can probably, if you're lucky, get some medlars. Yes, please. (laughs) Right. It's like one of the few places that you could get like a little quart of medlars. I love it. Me too, medlars. It's fantastic. You can also find quince there. (laughs) That's very good. And even some pears. I do not want to be left out, Rhea. No, Perry Pear, we will not leave you out. You can find pears there too. Very good. See, I mean, Scott Farm has it happening. And what a cool place to go to because they also have this stone museum. They have workshops there to teach people how to build stone walls. And these are not just your average run-of-the-mill stone walls. These are works of art. And it's a cool place to go have a picnic, hang out for a bit, spend some time just being in the scene because there's a lot of joy at this place. It's a beautiful orchard and always something happening at Scott Farm. This is a nonprofit that's been around for a while. In fact, Rupert Kipling's house is up there. You could rent it if you want to have a little event there. That's all part of Scott Farm too. But check out their cider. That's really what Cider Days 2.0 is all about. They're one of the sponsors for this event and they're doing a bang up job of really rolling out the cider and showcasing their talents and also the apples in their orchard. Links in the show notes to Scott Farm. Check them out every single weekend of November and specifically that first weekend of November 2 to celebrate everything about Cider Days. Speaking of Scott Farm and their apples, well, there is a brewery in Massachusetts right over the border from Brattleboro called The Brewery at Four Star Farms, and they're using apples and the juice from Scott Farm to make two different ciders. So they made one blend of apples, pressed it, and they're fermenting one batch with wild ambient yeast, and the second batch is with a cultured yeast. So you get to do a side-by-side tasting of this one juice. And I I think this is really cool, and I'm super excited. I've known the brewer there, Chris Sellers, for a number of years. Uh, You might not know, but besides this podcast, I also write about craft beer. And one of the things that I have been noticing for quite a while, in fact, even, shoot, going back, I would say like 2013 or so, when cider was really starting to rock and catch people's attention, I would be at beer competitions, and the only thing that people wanted to talk about was cider. So you knew it was happening then. I saw Boston Beer Company at that time was able to judge some of their early ciders. In fact, I have a an episode about that called Apologies to a Billionaire. <laughs> That's for another story. I put a link in the show notes to that. Um, but anyways, getting back to the brewery at Four Star Farms, they have this cider. They're going to be open all weekend of Cider Days. They're part of this region. They're really close to Greenfield. So that's worth your trip to go out there. It is 
a spectacular. You know what? I go out to like different locations in the world and I go, okay, world class, world class. Oh, this feels like the scenery, everything's world class. That is what the brewery at Four Star Farms is like. You kind of go down this little promenade road. It's right alongside the Connecticut River and you are surrounded on either side by crab apple trees. In November, you're not going to see too much on these trees. You're just going to see their beautiful bodies. I love naked trees. I confess, I love them. I love seeing when all the leaves come off and seeing the tree's body in full glory. And these trees are pretty astonishing. They have a brand new tasting room. The walk up is all like radiant sidewalk walking up. You go into this tasting room and there's ample space outside overlooking the hop fields. Really nice people. These are farmers who turned around and got a brewery going, got involved with a local brewer, Chris Sellers, and made it happen. And now Chris is all about making cider too. So they are in on the game. It's so cool for the region. I think it's really cool for Cider Days 2.0. And I'm I really can't wait to try the cider. I mean, a little bit of Scott Farm apples in the cider, two different ferments side by side. That is a fun outing. They typically always have a food truck there. You know they're going to have it going on that weekend. The brewery at Four Star Farms and tip of the glass to them for supporting and sponsoring Cider Days 2.0. Dancing in the street. One of the things I love about this first weekend of November with all these cider focused events is that you could tour about a bit and visit some really cool places. Remember how I was mentioning the Quabbin earlier and that at New Salem Cider, you can overlook the Quabbin? That's in New Salem. And then a town really just next door, not too far away, is a town called Peter Sam. And it is there that you will find a distillery by the name of Beaver Pond Distillery. And the distiller's name is Jerry Friedman. He was an attorney by trade. I'm sure once you're an attorney, you're always an attorney. But then became a distiller. So he is honing this craft. And the cool thing about his product is that he has the product in small format casks. So not large 55 gallon casks, but much smaller. And what that allows for is more contact with the oak. And that's what he's doing. And in fact, at the kickoff event on Friday night, the Calvados and American Apple Brandy tasting, we're going to have the apple brandy that he's been making. And I cannot wait to try that. I know he's going to be in the audience. You'll get to meet him if you're going to that event. But I also want to really encourage you to go to his distillery and check it out because besides apple brandy, he also has a number of other spirits too. One that we have talked about a little bit from time to time on this podcast, it's kind of popular. It's called Nochino and it's a liqueur made from green unripe walnuts. Now you might think like, oh, unripe walnuts, that doesn't taste good. But believe me, this taste are really good. I mean, it's the kind of thing you want to pour on your vanilla ice cream or just sip by the fire. It's a beautiful, deep, rich chocolate, dark color. Doesn't taste like chocolate though. It has its own specific taste and it it is a bit of work to make it. So if you don't want to do all that work and you just want to go to the source and try something that really tastes good right out of the bottle, check out Beaver Pond Distillery in Peter Sam. He also has a pear eau de vie, which is made from local Bartlett pears. So, you know, you don't have to go to France. Save yourself that airplane ticket. <laughs> Listen to me. <laughs> and just go and meet Jerry and check out this pear eau de vie. And eau de vie is, is something that it's not going to be a brown spirit. When I say brown spirit, that means something that's been in oak cast. So you get that coloration from the charred oak. In this case, it hasn't been sitting in oak. And so it's a very clear liquid, which I think really works nicely for a, a young pear eau de vie because you really get these like really floral notes of the pear. And I, I have had Bartlett's that have been distilled. And I want to say, you know what? We're rocking it with our Bartlett's. I like to see more of this actually. He also has an aged peach brandy, a grape brandy made with different 
varietals from the region. So it's kind of a classic brandy. A cherry, eau de vie, an apricot, eau de vie, and of course, that apple brandy. And who knows, by the time that this goes live, maybe he has something that hasn't gotten posted up on the website because distillers are busy. They're in there, hugging their barrels, working around the distillery and just perfecting it, perfecting it. You're going to enjoy meeting him at the kickoff event on Friday night, that Cavados and American Apple Brandy tasting. But you also really enjoy it if you go visit them directly, Beaver Pond Distillery in Peter Sam. There's links in the show notes to all these folks who are sponsoring Cider Days 2.0. And I was really stoked when he reached out to me, knew what I was doing, and wanted to support it. And that just really shows you how forward-thinking this man is and how much he believes in this region and wants to keep this tradition going. I, I, I really find that totally commendable. So tip of the glass to Jerry Friedman at Beaver Pond Distillery. Check it out. You're coming out from any part east of the Quabbin. Stop at Peter Sam. And might I know, if you go into the country store, you don't want to be calling it Peter Sam. It's Peter Sam. Okay? Just a little heads up. If you're from out of the area, it's Peter Sam, not Peter's ham. Or something like that. You'll, you'll figure it out. Peter Sam. I think you have totally confused the listeners. Me too. Okay, you guys. All right. Maybe all they should ask for at at the country store in the center of Peter Sam is Beaver Pond Distillery. Does that work? I suppose so, Rhea, but now I'm not sure what the name of the town is. It's Peter Sam, Perry. It's Peter Sam. It's easy. Oh, humans. Uh-huh. Hey, come on, Talking Palms. Look, you know, maybe this is a good time to introduce just who you are, my little cohorts. Okay. Yeah, well, that was a Medlars, and you also heard from Perry Pear. Yes, yes, you already introduced me. I know Perry Pear, but sometimes we have to do it like two or three times. And, of course, you have been hearing from Mr. Quince. Hello. All together, they are known as the Talking Palms, and help me so much in the Cider House doing the production and keeping me company while I am talking to you out there in Ciderville. Hello. Yeah, we, we, already, we already did that. Oh, okay. <laughs> Anyhow, that's who the Talking Palms are, Perry Pear, the Medlars, and Mr. Quince. And as we're rolling through this, we have one more sponsor that kind of stepped forward and said, hey, I want to help. And I think we should roll to that next. Okay. Quiet on the set. Okay, thanks, Matt Lars. Oh, boy. You see why I love the Talking Palms? No need to whisper, Rhea. We love you, too. Aw, oh, thanks, Perry Pear. Okay, let's move on with our final sponsor, which is Brook Farm Orchard up in Ashfield, Massachusetts. Now, the funny thing about this particular farm is they have already sold out of all their apples. Oh, no! Oh, Yes, and that means that it frees up Alan Supernaut, who is typically straight out on that weekend to be able to go do other events. So you might see him walking about. In fact, what he wrote to me was is he was going to be coming down to the 2.0 events in town and checking out what John Bunker is going to be talking about and some of the other happenings there. So that means Let's say you're at the Orchard Care for Homeowners workshop, which is going to be on Saturday morning at Hawks and Reeds with John Bunker, who's a treasure unto himself. I mean, the guy, that guy is amazing. I, I can't say enough about John Bunker. He's an author. He's a historian. He's personable. He's an artist. He founded Fedco Seeds. He's going to be doing that workshop. Homeowners. Take notice. I mean, if you have friends, if you are a cider maker and you want to get people into apples, tell them about this workshop. We want folks saving their apple trees and having an understanding how it happens, teaching their family and so that the generations can grow up and learn once again how to caretake fruit trees. So that's what that, that workshop is going to be about. Anywho, he's going to be down there. If you see a friendly looking guy, he has a beard. It's a white beard. He has white hair. You go up and say, hey, is your name Alan? That's a great way to connect. Don't be shy about that at 
this event. This is all about connecting, sharing cider. Make sure you have a glass. There's going to be Cider Days 2.0 glasses. It's a great way to support this event. If you're not going to any of the ticketed events, please pick one up at the Cider Pop-Up. They'll be there for tastings. And uh, that's that's really what it's all about. But anyways, what I do want to say about Brook Farm Orchard just because they are closed that weekend and not doing any events doesn't mean that they aren't doing events in other seasons. So definitely go to their Facebook page, Brook Farm Orchard, like it, follow that, and find out what they're doing. Let's say you are that homeowner who wants to learn about fruit trees, or you're somebody who is experienced, but you want to learn something more from somebody who's been in this for a really long time. I mean, he was best friends with Michael Phillips, who passed away way too suddenly. And we did an episode in dedication in in tribute to Michael. Uh, I will put a link in the show notes to that. So you want to know Alan, he is one of those outstanding characters out there, someone that you want to know and is doing really good work in the world as a person of being and for apple orchards. And certainly, thank you so much, Alan, for your support for Cider Days 2.0. I'm looking at the clock right now and I'm seeing how far we are already into this episode. And I know that I have to now do a part two, which is going to be rolling out next week. I kind of knew that already because there is so much going on. I haven't even told you yet what to bring or what to wear or where to park. And those are kind of the things that you do want to cover for this kind of event. Because although the Saturday 2.0 events are all taking place in downtown Greenfield, Well, we're all connected and there's all these other things going on and I want to prepare you a little bit for that. So that'll be coming out on next week's episode 342, which means after that episode, we're only eight episodes away from 350 episodes all on cider and orchard and makers and apples and folks in the cider trade and enthusiasts. Holy colosso. That's huge. That's really huge in my mind to kind of take that in. What I do want to tell you right now, though, is I want to throw out this reminder that there are ticket sales for Cider Days 2.0, and some of those ticket sales are going to be closing soon. Namely, the big one, which is the Cider Dinner taking place on November 5th, because we have to tell Aunt Kathy how many dinners to make, how much charcuterie to bring, and all that set up. So if you haven't gotten tickets yet for the Cider Dinner, it takes place on the fourth floor at Hawks and Reeds. It's totally accessible. There's an elevator. It's going to be mind boggling. I mean, Car Cider is bringing their white jersey cider. White jersey? Let me tell you, if you did not listen to that episode with Nicole and Jonathan, do it. And you're going to hear us talking a little bit about that particular cider. That's the cider they're bringing. Louisa Spencer is bringing her extra dry. That's the Farnham Hill that she and Steve Wood, her husband, run that operation. We also have a Ragged Hill Cider and Garwood Hamp is going to be representing Ragged Hill. We're going to have Judith Maloney. And Judith, it sounds like she's going to bring a little bit of this, a little bit of that, because you know what? She is a Queen Pomona. Uh, All reverence to West County, what her son Field there is doing, and Judith, who has really stepped back. And the fact that we're getting her at this dinner is just a, a treasure. She used to always run all the dinners at Cider Days way back in the day. And, you know, there's times when you could be in the forefront, sometimes when you want to kind of sit back and that she's showing up like this is really tremendous. I know that it's huge that she's doing it and it's going to be really, really good for her heart. So if you're going to be there, you're in for a special freaking treat. We're also going to have Eleanor Leger of Eden Specialty Cider that's up in Vermont. Am I missing anybody? Oh, Lisa Laird Dunn. Hello. Hello. From Lairs and Company, the oldest distiller in America, this family has 10 generations of Lairs that have been part of it since the beginning. I mean, 
this is epic. I think this is the most epic cider dinner this year. I'm sorry. I know you probably had some cider dinners out there, but this is freaking epic. It's all about celebrating women in cider, celebrating some of the traditions and the roots of our cider culture here in America with key people who got it started and are still doing it, baby. They are still doing it. So I really want to tell you about that. Go to the links in the show notes or just Google Cider Days 2.0 Cider Dinner and it will come up and you want to get those tickets. Uh, It's going to be a blast. I have a bunch of friends who are volunteering and helping set it up. There's going to be charcuterie. You're going to have that Lisa cocktail. We're going to be, it's an entertaining evening. I I will be walking around kind of like a bride (laughs) to all the tables, having a blast. I can't wait to see you there. Boy, if you're you're into like some good fun, that's going to be the night. Uh, Of course, there's other events too. The Calvados and American Apple Brandy Tasting. Oh my gosh. Wait till next week's episode. I'm going to save this clip. We're talking about, a particular Calvados coming from the Chateau de Brill, and that was aged on a port cask. That means the 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 oak barrel was first it first held port, and now it's been holding Calvados. We're, we're going to hear from David who brought that Calvados to me for this treat. Oh yo 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 yo, Ciderville, the abundance. I feel like my whole life has been like rolling up to this one weekend, and it's just going to be just bounty. And that's where we want to stay in. We want to stay in abundance because we don't have time for scarcity. So look for those tickets, go to the links next week. I will bring, be bringing you going to Saturdays 2.0 part two with a little bit more detail. Cause I know that there's some other cool things happening like, Oh, would you like some caramel miso apple pie? Mm, stay tuned for that. I haven't even reminded you about the cider pop-up and the cider authors that are going to be there and the musician, John Hughes, and the vendors. Oh, my goodness. So much going on. So I'll see you next week. For now, I think I'm going to be rolling out of here. As always, this is Rhea Windcaller and the Talking Palms. Hello. Looking forward to seeing you in Ciderville. We like cider, we like palms, we love orchards and having fun. There is a reason, there is a reason why we do it like this. Oh yes there is, there is a reason why we do it like this. Oh yes there is, there is a reason why we drink it like this. Oh yes there is, there is a reason. We like walking through the orchards, dancing in the streets, smelling all the blossoms, kicking up our feet. We like cider, we like palms, we like orchards, having some fun. There is a reason. There is a reason why we do it like this. Oh, yes, there is. There is a reason why we do it like this. Oh, yes, there is. There is a reason why we drink it like this. Oh, yes, there is. There is a reason. We like walking through the orchards, dancing in the streets, smelling all the blossoms, kicking up our feet. Oh, yeah. We we like cider. Oh, yes, we do. Oh yes we do We love orchards Having some fun There is a reason There is a reason why we do it like this There is a reason why we do it like this There is a reason why we drink it like this We like walking down the orchards Dancing in the streets Smelling all the blossoms Kicking up our feet Oh, yeah. We like cider. We like palms. Oh, yes, we do. We like orchards. Having some fun. Yeehaw!